guys, so this is day two of a three-day project. We made a ton of progress yesterday. Pulled out practically everything that needed to be pulled out. For the most part, it came out way beyond expectations here. Obviously, some more unforeseen damage, but that's what goes on when you get cars like this. You gotta start ripping stuff off before you start seeing the actual damage here. But we were able to pull out this plate, as you guys saw in yesterday's video. Pulled this out, pulled all this out here. Last thing we need to do is put the uh, frame rail end on cut this off, put that on here, line everything up, and hopefully by the end of the next videos, we should have the whole back put on in one piece. That's right. I can't believe it's finally starting to look like a car again. In the last episode, day one of my three-day adventure, Yuri from 23rd Garage was able to help me straighten out the back of the car, as well as remove most of the damaged parts that need replacing. We were off to a pretty rocky start though, with surprises popping up just about all over. First we found hidden damage, and then we discovered that I didn't have all the parts needed to even complete the rear end of the car. That's what people, people who do bad framework say. We got an issue. What? Well, this is just one piece of it. What do you mean? Yeah. Yeah, see, we're missing the outer. Luckily, a Volkswagen dealer about 90 miles away from where we were, located in Knoxville, Tennessee, had the part, and fortunately, my friend Sean was able to drive out and pick it up. All in all, though, we ended up with almost all the damage removed, and that means that now, I just hope we can put it all back together in time. You got anything else to add? No, sir. <laughs> No. I mean, I, it's, it, you're doing great. There's some bumps and it's a bumpy road, but I'm, I'm just surprised that that, that, uh, yeah. that trunk pan came out like that. It was, it was bumpy yesterday, but the way it looks now, I'm actually really impressed and really happy. So it's, it's coming. We're uh, going to we'll straighten out a lot more, but I'm very, I'm very happy with that. And we'll just put a little plate here. Yeah, we do. We do have to actually have to fabricate yeah, our own piece plate. for that side because we just don't have time to wait from the dealer. So I think that's going to be. I think it'll be fine and it's gonna be fun. Yeah, for know? sure. Learn how to weld here and there. I haven't done that yeah, yet. Yeah, we'll be taking how to weld. So in a nutshell, the goal for today is to remove what's left of the old frame rail and replace it with the new one that I bought. Now, obviously that's a lot easier said than done because Volkswagen has some of the hardest and strongest steel in the automotive industry. So we'll see how easy this goes. Now, first things first though, I wire wheeled all the seam sealer off of the old frame rail, which revealed all the spot welds that need to be drilled out. After a couple of drill bits later though, we were in the clear. Next, Yuri aligned what was left of the frame rail in order to make sure that he had a clean cut. Remember, measure twice, cut once, as there's no going back. Once everything looked good, it was officially time to sawzall the frame rail off. Remember what I said about that ultra high strength steel being difficult to work on? Well, I wasn't kidding. This stuff is freaking strong. A couple of hours and one carbide blade later, and we actually managed to get through it. What's up? We need a wire wheel all this shit up the bottom right here. Yeah. It came off clean. Oh yeah, it came off really nice. We need a wire wheel that shit off so I can dolly out that floorboard. Yeah. Don't get under there just yet. Oh you're just doing that. Yeah, I want this bolt. All right, so what I'm doing here is wire wheeling all the seam sealer off the trunk pan. This is to make it easier to flatten out the metal while also prepping it for welding to the rear wall. Now there's quite a bit, but it all needs to go if we want to ensure a good bond when it's welded. I'm also cleaning up the underside here so that we can hammer out the pan flat. Otherwise it will leave bumps in the metal and it won't align properly to the wall. Once I was done, it was then time to flatten everything out. Now by flattening out the rear pan, we could then pull it out more to get it back to where it used to be. And honestly, it pulled out incredibly well.
Once we got everything straightened out, it was time to start working on the new frame rail end. What Yuri's doing here is actually pretty cool. By placing the light behind and using a piece of paper, it creates a shadow of the frame rail, basically a template of how it needs to be cut. Using the bolt as a reference point, once he mocked up the template, he could then transfer it to the new frame rail end and line it up exactly with the bolt. Yuri sprayed the new frame rail end with some weld through primer, and then it was time to cut it to shape. With everything lining up good, we then transferred the old bolts to the new frame rail end. Now here's something pretty interesting. What Yuri's doing here is called creating a gusset, which is basically a plate that goes in between the two pieces you are trying to weld together. The reason you do this is to transfer the stresses between the connecting pieces while also strengthening the joint between them. It's very cool and it's also very important. With everything aligning good, it was time to weld the mounting horn onto the frame rail end, as well as the exhaust bracket. of the golf rebuild. And uh, we actually have a lot of progress. We've got the rear trunk pan all dollied out. It still needs a little bit more uh, here and there, and we'll have to straighten this out to the rear wall. Obviously, it's not in its position. You can see it's still kind of bent, but it's really flimsy and it moves around a lot. We need to actually go ahead and attach it uh, to the rear wall and then once we attach it then we can dolly everything out the rest of the way get it nice and straight It's not gonna move anymore, and then we'll weld it up. We also uh, Assembled the frame rail right here. It all came in three different pieces So I've got it cut to size and I've got the frame horn end welded on and we've got the muffler Bracket welded on everything looks super good We're gonna clean it all up and we're gonna spray it with some primer on the inside and then we'll spray everything with primer on the inside here and made it up, weld it on, and we'll be good to go. Yes, sir. It's officially time to start putting the rear end back together. Since the rear wall is brand new, Yuri was able to use it as a reference to see where the frame rail ends need to go. After a few pulls, they were perfect and lining up exactly where they needed to be. Next, I had to prep the outer rear wall. You know, the piece that I forgot and my friend had to drive 90 miles to go pick up? Yeah, that one. Now, but using this air compressed punch, I was able to put holes everywhere that needed to get spot welded. I can't imagine using a drill bit for this because there are way too many holes that need to be drilled out and I'm sure it would take forever. Luckily, this tool made incredibly quick work of the job and we were able to keep on going. With the rear apron on the car, we could loosely screw the bolts in to make sure that everything was lining up properly, which it did. Yuri then tack welded the apron in place so that it wouldn't move. Now, for those that don't know what tack welds are versus spot welds, basically tack welds are just small and temporary welds that hold parts together for the final welding. Now the tack welds maintain the alignment of everything and the gap between the pieces of metal that we're trying to join together. Now that the apron is secure, we were able to temporarily mount the rear reinforcement and see how it fits. Yuri was then able to use this as a way to pull everything over and to ensure that the hatch closes and aligns properly with the car.
Yuri made a few minor adjustments to the hatch by unscrewing the bolts at the top. Pretty much everything on this car can be adjusted when it comes to panel alignment. Nothing is set one way, which is good, but also a pain in the butt as you guys can see. With everything looking good and on schedule, all that's left to do in my last day with 23rd Garage is just some final measurements and then welding everything in place and officially completing the framework. I'm sure why I'm trying to learn stuff, right? I always wondered why science class and stuff, they would make, have a video showing you like soda or something. Pull me closer.